All right. Well, we're ready for the outside. It's the home stretch, but as I said, there's a lot more going on on the outside of this than on the original rotating labyrinth. And so I'm just going to start with like a 20 foot wide door right here. Pop it on there. I'm use the sharper pencil. That just kind of puts a, a marker where we know that that's going to be. And. Hmm. So we've decided that this is like a greeting area, right? So I say we, and you helped. <laughs> um, so I'm going to make it big and wide, actually. I'm going to make this kind of a great hall. Um, 40 feet wide feels, feels pretty good. And so we're going to put little pillars every 20 feet and we're really going to make it long I think I think that's fun and then I'm going to be cutting doors into the sides of this I'm just going to trace it out for now because I want to put kind of the the receiving Thrown right here. Thrown. And I like that. So then off of this wing here, I'm going to put a corridor. Why don't we indicate that this is kind of drawn in right here? Um, the corridor out and rooms I put over here were pretty big, maybe, maybe 20 feet deep and 30 feet wide. Um, we're gonna do smaller rooms for kind of the guest rooms off the, the great hall here. I'm going to make, um, Looks like I'm going to make them 15 feet by 20 feet. Okay. Um, and actually, there should be a door leading into this kind of guest room corridor. Probably not just open to the hall. <clears throat> Can I loop it all the way around? I'm going to try to loop it all the way around. So I'm going to put another door here. Before we get too far, rooms, rooms, next corridor would therefore be here. Is that reasonable? It's reasonable. All right, and then we could have. Door. Door. Perfectly. Hmm. 
Hmm. We'll put just a little. I'm even gonna make it a secret door actually. It's just gonna duck down past the back here. Come out to to some uh, arrow slits in here. All right, and we're gonna have a room here, and so the corridor can go ahead and turn here. Should use the room to put another room here. Pretty easy. And we'll pop a room in here. And I never know what to do with these rooms when I think, oh, how many guests would a place like this receive? Oh, I don't know. It depends. Maybe, maybe a lot, right? And so here's all these guest rooms, and then the players are playing along, and they... see a hallway full of doors, and they want to go look in each room, right? And I, I, just, I don't often know what to do with them. Um, I have a document called Who Would Just Leave This Stuff on Drive Through RPG um, that has a bunch of tables for like just finding junk in cabinets and armoires and under the bed and stuff. And And when I have this many rooms, it's just kind of a pain even to roll on all those tables, right? And and say. So I'll usually uh, truncate the number of times that I roll based on getting um uh, interesting stuff a little bit faster. And that works okay. Works okay. They've seen a lot of this stuff on those tables already because I've been using it for, for years. Um, still a lot of stuff they haven't seen. Um, but a lot of the stuff that's in bedrooms they've seen, right? So maybe I needed to to have more variety on the bedroom tables when I designed that document. But they have, haven't seen much of the stuff in kitchens and things because there just aren't as many kitchens as there are bedrooms, are there? So... So the point is, here I am, I'm, I'm going to throw in 8, maybe 12, or 13 bedrooms here. They're just guest bedrooms, and with guest bedrooms I almost always say, oh yeah, this looks like it was a guest bedroom and whoever stayed here last took their stuff with them, right? Which makes sense. But it it's kind of asks the question, why is, it on the dun why is it on the dungeon map? And it's on the dungeon map because... Obviously, they would have guest rooms, <laughs> so it's there for verisimilitude and not for, um, not to really drive any kind of plot or challenge or discovery or anything. It's it's really there um, for the purposes of fantasy, of helping players who who want immersion to feel immersed. Then we put like a, a closet there, I guess. And I 
and we need to get this all connected in. So let's see. So we've got a great hall. We've got guest rooms. I think it makes sense to have kind of a, a receiving room or a study or like a lounge off of the great hall here. So actually, we're just going to make that open. We're not going to put a door in it. Make it pretty big. Not quite as wide as the Great Hall. No one near as long. Something like this. <clears throat> and then off of that, I think I want to put like a study. So you come out here and you talk to people in the lounge, right? But if you're having a more private meeting, maybe you come into the study or maybe you go into the study to get away from the party. These guys really like their octagons. Now I think it makes sense for the study to then have a bit of a door. going out into the maze area. I'm actually going to put a pretty sizable library on this side here. Door here. Thanks. No, we're working on it. We're working on it. We're getting there. So sizable library to me means that we're going to have it run well past the great hall here. And we're going to have it connect up to a number of things, right? So I'm going to have it connect up here. I'm going to have it... I'm going to put a little kind of I don't know I don't know like a kind of sitting area here where these two corridors run together and it's going to also connect on into the library I'm going to have this corridor come out this way And uh, like that. I don't know. I don't know. And so we're going to say that this is kind of an archway with a pillar in the middle that kind of connects into the library, right? And so maybe there's some like chairs here where you can come out and read from the library and that's kind of giving access to the library from the main complex that and that and close it up here okay guest rooms lounge study library And so that's probably all that we need from like a, nope. Oh, we need like a dining hall. And right now, the dining hall would be accessed like through the library, right? Does that even make sense? So we're going to make this the dining hall. And then this is going to be like the, 
drying room or whatever they call it, right? Where you go after the after dinner. And, and then off the dining hall, we're gonna put kitchens back in here. And then I'm gonna put the library on this side. I like the library better over here, actually, because it's closer to the study. And instead of making, we're going to make it more round. We're going to have it start rounding out here. Maybe it'll come back out this way. And these are the types of considerations you have to make for any dungeon. So I don't know if this part of the video is really teaching how to make a rotating labyrinth anymore. Actually, I say this is the type of considerations you need to make for any dungeon. This is the kind of considerations that maybe you consider ignoring for any dungeon. Uh, but I do them. I, I really think that I like having things with a pretty good level of verisimilitude. I mean, that looks pretty goofy. Okay, so there's our library now. It's got access into the maze. Um, I was tempted to make this a secret door. Mm, but maybe they're just not that concerned about people wandering back into the maze, right? So I said kitchens. Let's go ahead and add the kitchens. Um, that's fine. They're just going to be shaped like this. Maybe they're giant. So I think off the kitchens, it makes sense to have kind of a Dining area for the servants. Not far off the kitchens, so we're going to put that here. Can you tell that I've seen Downton Abbey? And then I'm going to put just a couple corridors running this way. Put doors on them. Not going to contain a whole lot. This is for the the servant quarters. <laughs> so just going to add one here. And we'll have a door here into this one, into this one. And they're not very big. That almost doesn't make sense. A space in between. That's fine. That's fine. Open a little bit more extra space. Um, yeah, I don't like that I'm spending so much time on these decisions. This is definitely not, not what we're here for, right?
So I suppose the real point of this part of the video, or even this, this whole video, depending on how I manage to parse things out, is that this outside section is meant for more public use not really trusted people who you're trying it's not the stuff you're trying to keep people away from right this is guest receiving area so the way i've cut this in you're really only going to be entering from from this area into the circle a few different ways so anything else that we put around these areas it can it, maybe it's not as secure because it's it's uh out there and accessible <clears throat> but it's not, it's no longer public, right? Um, and of course, there's the way that I did it in the original rotating labyrinth was this is really just a way these were, these outer areas were things that you knew were secure and they actually did a lot <clears throat> to span past the circle, right? So that you had corridors that you could count on being there that would get you get you around sections of the circle and so that might be fun to do anyway right so I think do a few things that are real simple right like I think we'll just close these two up together so if you ever need to get out around there that's fine I'm gonna put a room here don't know what's in it yet we'll get there I don't like that. I'm going to make it a circular room. And I'm going to give it a center like right there. Is that going to come over too far? To here. And to here. And to here. And I'll just kind of freehand that because I've got the compass here. Because it doesn't need to rotate. <laughs> okay. Well, it's kind of a circular room over here. Who knows? Who knows what's in there? Um, we have a lot of corridors coming off of this set of stuff. So I'm actually on this side, I'm gonna snake this corridor along a little bit. And this is gonna be like a spying corridor. So this is gonna be where people would come along and they would listen in on the, the people in charge of the servants. Kind of comes in here behind the, the guest rooms. So if somebody they wanted to spy on, they would put into one of these guest rooms that has a, a peephole or a, a listening hole or whatever it is. So we'll just run this corridor back along here. And that's going to be the purpose of that guy. They are just spying on everybody. I'm actually going to, I like the idea of it having like a secondary access here with the secret door. that around this way okay it's like it's that corridor taken care of probably more of a circuitous, circuitous way than I really wanted to and 
put some kind of room here. That's fun. Have it run all the way out. And have this guy come into it and cut these corners off. And cutting corners is more work than leaving the corners on sometimes. And I'm singing a song, and that's probably not what you're here for either. Cool. Um, just keep going. kind of fun thing we can do is we can have like some corridor come out really far here and loop around and then we'll put a little mini loop inside of that loop and players might wonder if there's a way to connect those up or what because that would be pretty convenient And there's probably not a way. So the purpose of these, well, from a play perspective, because I've mentioned it gives the players something permanent that they understand that they can use. And from a like a world building design perspective, it's this is the the things that the people who know the maze are using to to get around to the spots where they really want to get because they know what they're looking for. I'm just gonna, uh, dead ends on the outside. I don't know if they make a lot of sense. Didn't do any on the original rotating labyrinth. But I did one there. That'll be fun. And then. I kind of like the idea of some kind of a room here, but but what kind of a room would we want back here? I don't have to figure it out yet. I just was wondering how big I wanted to make it. Because, I mean, this circular room is pretty massive, really. We can make something even bigger back there. Maybe, maybe we do. Maybe we say, because I've already put, altars in a few places, right? Maybe we put like a massive um, kind of altar chamber. Wow, James. Let's go get the roller. I blame not leaning in front of the camera, which I might still be doing. All right. And then that's going to have big vaulted ceilings with pillars out here in the middle. Um, Benches all the way across. I think those benches are going to kind of leave a gap up the middle. So that bench doesn't look like it makes a lot of sense, but this one makes more sense. Thank goodness for two times speed, huh? If I was a little bit smarter, I wouldn't have yammered so much during this and we could time lapse it up.
So we're kind of establishing that there's some sort of a religious thing going on here. And actually, this type of stuff might not make sense for the people I was thinking I was going to have build the rotating labyrinth in this. Rotating labyrinth 2.0 in the Haven world. Um, I wasn't settled on who it was, actually. Just had some people who had a lot of circular fortresses down in the underground dark that I was thinking it would make sense if they had something like this for their kind of main security thing. We're gonna. La, 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 la. This is like here, actually, right? So. Yeah, open it up again to here. Cool. Open it up here. Well, I guess here. Gonna back this up a little more. All right, access to that kind of altar hall. Okay, that, that, this. We're getting there. We're definitely in the home stretch, guys. Open that up. All right. Well, if we got the altar room there, I think it actually makes a lot of sense to have a couple doors off of this wall. Probably just here, actually. Maybe there's like a curtain hanging in front of it. Um, and have that be a corridor that has some like priestly chambers. Oh my goodness. Am I really just running out of steam here? Take it further back. Priestly chamber. And I think the part of the reason I wanted to do that was to have this be accessible from this side. And then we can do another chamber like this. What the? Okay. <clears throat> We are really getting here. I'm going to simplify this side quite a bit. I'm just going to have this loop out here. And I'm going to, right here, I have this bump in to clue the players in that there's a secret door here. We'll have it bump in here too, so that we get clues on both sides. And... We're getting real close. I think there's room for another couple of priestly rooms here. Just 
just the one more. Yeah, we'll put one here too. Right there. And, oh, I was trying to think what to do with this. I got this weird three fingers that aren't really connected to anything. I think I'm actually gonna have one of them come around into here, into that circular room. Whatever it is. So that's fun. I'm going to loop this one all the way out. I think that's fun. Because this is really, once you get out here, this is the shortcuts that people are doing to not have to deal with the randomness inside the circle, right? So they they want utility out of these tunnels, not the confusion. That's how I'm going to justify this to myself. And then this one, this one's coming off at that angle, and then I'm going to have it come into this big old room here. Because why not? Off here, we'll figure out what room that is later. And we got three more. Um, I'm just gonna hook them all up. Why not? Why not, indeed. Halfway out here, come in. So we're coming to the end here. Um, obviously, if you have any questions about design aspects of the rotating labyrinth, drop them in the comments below. Because if they haven't been answered yet, they're not going to be answered by this video. And I'm currently not planning on another video because this is it. Maybe someday when I get this uh, filled out with all the locations labeled and named and get it digitized, I'll have a video saying that Rotating Labyrinth 2.0 is up for sale, but this is it as far as the tutorial on how to make a rotating labyrinth. So, I say this is it. If you ask questions in the comments below and I decide that it takes a whole other video to explain that, I'll do another video, right? But as far as I can tell, as far as I've got planned, this is it. This is the video. So those questions down below. I'm filling in the circles here because they're looking real faint compared to the corridors at this point. Now that we got all the corridors drawn in. Yep. Comment below. If you got any questions and once again, it would also be helpful to let me know. If you've watched all the way to the end of this many video series that I think is probably pretty boring, me drawing stuff, comment below with uh, 
how you made it, th why you made it this far. What was interesting enough that you're still here? Because I sure would like to know. And uh, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.